Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Welcome to the lecture entitled Applying the Correct Amount of Pesticide. This information comes directly from Chapter 10 in your Ornamental and Turf Grass Pest Management book. Now, hopefully you've already read the chapter, so if not, please pause the video, come back to it after you've read the chapter, highlight what you think is important, and then follow along with me in your textbook as you watch the lecture and highlight the things that I'm pointing out to you. And always remember, in your ONT manual, the, the information highlighted in the blue boxes is very likely to be on an exam that you're going to see uh, in the near future, whether it be within this course or if you're taking the uh, state pesticide applicator licensing exam. Good information in those blue boxes, guys. I can't stress that enough to you. So let's get started with applying it correctly. To use pesticides successfully, you must apply the correct amount of pesticide over the target area in a uniform way. We're gonna teach you how to do that. Errors in rate or uniformity may waste money, injure plants, they can damage the environment, they'll fail to control the pest, and then it can result in fines for illegal application. You don't want your name in the back of the publication that the Department of Agriculture sends out every so often that's got all the list of violations. You don't want your name in that. That could be detrimental to your uh, horticulture career. You should know in every situation, rather than guess it, whether you're applying the correct amount of pesticide, and that's what we're going to learn how to do, whether it's calculating the area to be applied to and calculating the application rate. How much pesticide do I apply to a property? So guys, we got some good math problems that you're going to see. Measure the treatment area. All right, small sites are measured in square feet. That's your typical residential lawn. You know, you've got a 5,000 square foot house, you know, or not house, but you got a 5,000 square foot lot and you've got some driveway, you've got some sidewalk, you've got some shrub beds, that areas need to be subtracted out and we'll learn how to do that. Larger sites are measured in acres, whether it's a golf course, uh, an agricultural field, or any type of sod farm, anything like that where we're dealing with acreage is going to be measured uh, in acres. And then mistakes, guys, are very costly. Well, how can they be costly? Well, if you apply too much pesticide, you're wasting money, you're hurting the environment, and it's possible that you could be fined for improperly um, applying pesticides. You're applying too much. A guy's label is the law. You've seen the lecture, pesticide labeling. You cannot apply more pesticides than stated in the label. You're in violation of the law. You're gonna get caught eventually. And if you don't have a pesticide license, you're gonna eventually get caught if you're applying it without the license. You need to know how to do this stuff, guys, and that's what the license demonstrates is that you have the proper knowledge and training to calibrate this equipment and figure the application rates uh, for each application you're doing. Subtract the areas not treated. Again, I was talking about a 5,000 square foot lot. We have a you know 50 foot wide lot um, that's 100 foot deep. You've got a 1,500 square foot floor plan that's sitting on that, and then you've got a driveway, maybe 300, 400 square feet, sidewalk of 150. You have to add all of that areas that's not getting the, the chemical application and subtract it from that total square footage to figure out exactly how much turf grass that you're going to apply uh, the pesticide to. Or it may be shrub beds that you're applying it. You have to figure exactly the area that you are covered. And there's examples uh, of the problems in your textbook and we're gonna cover them in this lecture. Now, let's do a little review of some basic geometric shapes. We have the area of a circle, pi r squared. You know, pi is 3.14, that's a constant. Radius is half the diameter, so if you know the, the whole width of the circle, cut it in two, you've got your radius. The area of a rectangle is length times width. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. And then the trapezoid. You have A plus B divided by two multiplied by the height. And specifically, uh, for the triangle and the trapezoid, notice where the letter B is, the letter A, and the letter H. That will help you to determine uh, your square footage. And here's a great example of a golf course. Now, we would measure an entire golf course in acreage. We're going to figure the square footage for this golf course hole, but as you can see, it's at 38,036 square feet. It's almost an acre for that entire hole 
from tee box to um, putting green. We've got almost an acre. So, but the area of a golf course hole can be divided into the circle, the rectangle, the triangle, and the trapezoid. The total area is the sum of the individual areas, A plus B plus C plus D. In A being the area of the circle, we have our pi, 3.14 times 70 times 70, because we know the radius is 70, gives us 15,386 square feet. B, the rectangle, we have 170 feet times 90 feet, gives us 15,300 square feet. And then we have C, which is 90 feet times 50 feet divided by two, gives us 2,250 square feet, and that is for our triangle. And last but not least is the trapezoid. We have 115 feet plus the 140 feet divided by two times it by 40 gives us 5,100 square feet for a total square footage of 38,036. You know, 5,000 um, extra 5,000 square feet, guys, we'd have an acre. Remember that an acre is 43,560 square feet. So calibration. What is calibration? Well, calibration is the process of measuring output and adjusting your equipment to apply the right amount of pesticide to the target area. You must calibrate, guys. I would calibrate on a daily basis. If I was a 100% dedicated lawn care company and that's all I was doing, every single morning I would calibrate my equipment. Now, as a landscape contractor or horticulture professional, you may not be using your equipment every day. So you definitely would have to calibrate your equipment each time you use it. But even if I was using it every single day, I'm going to calibrate. And I'll tell you why later. Calibration needs to be completed by the individual applying the pesticides. For one, you may have differences in height of your applicators. You know, I'm five foot 10. We may hire somebody that's six foot five, has a longer stride than I do. So they're walking faster than me. We may hire somebody that's a little bit shorter. Well, their stride may not be as long as mine. You guys, if you've taken my plant materials classes, you know I'm a speedy walker. I can jet across a piece of property looking at plants pretty quick. I'm the same way when I'm applying my pesticides. So that walking mile per hour is going to be different. We need to stay between two and three miles per hour when we're putting out our applications, but uh, each, each person's stride is different, and so each person needs to calibrate their own equipment. When equipment is properly calibrated, it's going to deliver the right amount of pesticide, and it is going to apply uniformly, and it's going to save you money. Calibration equals dollars saved, guys. You know, well, I can't have my technicians calibrate their equipment every morning. That's going to take me 15 minutes. Guys, that 15 minutes is going to save you tons of money throughout um, the week when they're applying pesticides for you. Do it every day. Do it every day. The book even states that you're supposed to do it from job to job, especially on a rotary spreader. Now, you need to know the application rate, and that information is going to be found on the pesticide label. It's going to be found in the directions for use, and some examples of that is going to be four ounces per thousand square feet. And if you've seen my lectures in the past, I break down my yards per thousand square foot blocks. So we may have a, um, you know, a, almost an acre yard, and I'm going to break it into 40. 1,000 square foot blocks when I subtract out the driveway in the house. You know, I want to know how many thousand square foot blocks I have on that property because a lot of our applications, especially granular applications, is going to tell you how many pounds per thousand square feet that you're going to put out or this bag will cover 18,000 square feet. So you know how much you've got. You got to know that target site, guys, how big it is. You may also see three ounces per gallon and that's product per volume. And that might be for spot spraying or even a 2% solution may be used for spot spraying, but that's going to be your percent solution mixed with water. And we're going to look at some examples uh, to do that. So when do you calibrate? Guys, definitely before using it the first time each year, but, but hopefully you're doing it more than just once a year before you use it. You need to do it, guys. Again, I'm, I'm going to stress that you need to calibrate your equipment every day. You need to calibrate it each time you use it. And if you're spraying every day or pushing a spreader every day, you're going to do it every day. Um, when changing the type of pesticide, you may be putting out, you know, some yards may take different things. Well, you may put out some uh, um, 
slow release fertilize, and then you may have to go and get a new, you've got a new yard and you've got the soil test results back, you're gonna be putting out lime. So definitely you're gonna calibrate it before going to the lime application yard. You've got to, you've got to calibrate it when you're, when you're changing out your, your products. When changing the rate and speed at which it is applied. Now, guys, that can vary. You know, like I said, you may have somebody, you may have a two person crew and they're out um, pushing spreaders together. They're, you know, doing a large site. Well, what if they get, you know, they calibrate their spreaders in the morning and then after lunch, they get the spreaders mixed up and the, the guy that's six foot five uh, who has a longer stride grabs the fertilized spreader that's been calibrated by somebody that's um, five six you know their strides shorter and it takes a little longer you've got to make sure that you calibrate it each time guys even the same individual you know in the morning you're refreshed you're a little more upbeat you're applying pesticides that two to three mile an hour range what if it's 95 degrees and you're out pushing a spreader and it's two o'clock in the afternoon you just had a heavy lunch you might not be walking as fast. So you might even want to calibrate it at that time too, guys. Or, you know, don't be putting out pesticides anyway when it's 95 degrees. You know, get all that stuff done prior to lunch if at all possible. Um, when equipment is moved from one site to another, and that's a little difficult. This is especially important with rotary spreaders because their settings are easily knocked out of place. Now, one thing I like doing is making sure that rotary spreader is tied down somewhere, either in the back of the truck, back of the trailer, or when I'm applying a granular application, I want the fertilizer in the back of my truck, and we've got a receiver hitch that'll hold that fertilized spreader on it, and it's not going to you know, damage. Yeah, it's going to bounce a little bit and stuff, but it's not as bad as if it's just laying loose in the back of the truck or turned on its side, laying in the bed. You want it upright uh, in a good position where it's going to be protected. And, and really on the back of the tailgate, hanging out of the receiver hitch is a perfect place for it. Um, safety. Guys, when you're calibrating your equipment, remember you're using equipment that's already had pesticides in it. You still need to wear the proper uh, PPE or personal protective equipment. You need to make sure you're wearing the gloves, you know, eye protection, uh, boots if necessary, whatever the label states for that chemical that it was prior to it, you still need to wear that PPE. Your equipment choice, guys, each piece of equipment is gonna be calibrated different. You may be using a boom sprayer, so you're gonna to have to check the nozzles, the types of nozzles, if they're damaged, um, if you're doing a gun sprayer uh, that's mounted to your truck, a big truck sprayer, you know, each application is going to have its own different equipment and each one of it's going to be calibrated differently. And remember, really with your speed, you want to keep between two and three miles an hour walking and then four to six while you're driving a piece of equipment, whether it's a tractor uh, or one of these ride on spreader hopper things that was developed. Uh, mainly for the lawn care industry. Now, remember, when doubling your speed, you're gonna cut your application rate in half. So look, we've got a tractor here with a boom sprayer. Uh, it's putting out 20 gallons per acre when it is going three miles an hour. But when we in or decrease, uh, increase our speed to six miles an hour, we're decreasing our application rate to only 10 gallons per acre. So it's kind of really the opposite of what you think. If you double your speed, your application rate is cut in half. And that information is found uh, on page 127. Um, slowing down will produce uh, the higher rate. And so when you're tired in the afternoon and you're slowing down, you're putting out more chemical than needed. And that's in violation of the law, right? You cannot put more pesticides down uh, than is uh, required by the label. Now, let's look at calibrating a backpack sprayer or handheld sprayer, probably the more commonly used uh, sprayer thing in the, the landscape management or maintenance um, side of things. Usually your backpacks are gonna have compressed air up to 30 PSI. The pressure drops as the solution is sprayed. Now, let's think, we've got a backpack sprayer. Uh, I'm right-handed, so I'm holding the wand in my right hand. You can switch it up and you can actually, the, the pump up side can be mounted on the left or the right. Uh, but you're holding it in your right hand, I'm pumping with my left. Uh, I pump it up, you know, it's gonna have about 30 PSI. I'm gonna spray, and the more I spray, that pressure's going to decrease. So I'm gonna have to, every so often, pump it with the hand wand to keep that pressure up. And you want to keep it within 
10 PSI of the original pressure. So hopefully you've got that little gauge on the end of it. If it doesn't get broke sitting in the back of the truck, uh, but keep it within 10 PSI of the initial pressure. So keep it at a constant, you know, pressure there and spray it and spray it. It is good. I love the backpack sprayer. I don't like mixing my fertilize with my herbicides. I, I like having that backpack on the truck because not all of the yards are going to be covered in weeds. If you're a great lawn care applicator, your lawns are going to be supposedly weed free other than some crabgrass that comes back every year. So you're just going to have to go and grab the backpack uh, every so often and, and do some touch up spraying uh, on people's yards. You don't need the big boom sprayer or big hose and reel type application unless it's like a new yard that you're getting. Your, your yards that you're maintaining year to year should be on a good program that they're not having uh, so many weeds to be honest with you. Um, calibrating by area. If you're applying the pesticide to an area measured in square feet, calibrate the sprayer by staking out a thousand square foot test plot for example, a 20 foot by 50 foot area on a surface similar to the treatment site. Now, we're, we're, let's say we're spraying turf grass, but we need to see the water that we're spraying. So try to find a parking lot, you know, concrete, asphalt, or even gravel because you can see the rocks get wet, but you need that 20 by 50. And we're going to calibrate this uh, handheld sprayer or backpack sprayer uh, with water only. And so step one, we're going to fill the sprayer tank half full with water, no pesticides in it. Guys, when we're calibrating spray equipment, it's water only. Granular um, applicators, the, the push rotary spreaders or drop spreaders, we're going to use uh, the, um, the product itself. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Maintain the pump and pressure that you will use during the application. Remember within 10 PSI. Record the number of seconds it takes to spray the test plot evenly while walking at a comfortable steady pace between two and three miles per hour. And it is a good idea to spray the test plot two or three times and figure the average. Use the average time in your calibration. Now, step two, stand still and spray into a container the average time found in step one. The number of ounces collected equals the amount of spray delivered to a thousand square foot block. Remember, I like breaking my yard down to square foot blocks. With this number, you can calculate the amount of pesticide and water needed to treat the target area. And we have the perfect landscape pesticide calculation here. Apply a herbicide to a lawn that is 40 feet by 65 feet. Typical residential site. The labeled application rate is two ounces of herbicide are to be mixed with a sufficient amount of water to treat a thousand square feet. So two ounces per thousand. This can be expressed as two OZ forward slash thousand square feet, two ounces per thousand square feet. Again, those thousand square foot blocks guys come in handy. Area to be treated is 40 times 65. So that gives us 2,600 square feet. Your test plot to cover this thousand square foot area is 80 seconds. The amount of water collected in 80 seconds is 57 ounces. So your sprayer output is 57 ounces per thousand square feet. To determine the total spray mixture needed, multiply the target area by the sprayer output. So we have 2,600 square feet. We're going to multiply it by 57 ounces per thousand square feet equals 148,200 ounces per thousand square feet which you divide by the thousand gives you 148 ounces round off to 148 and notice that we're rounding down not up always apply just that little bit less than bumping up because you don't want to spray more uh, than is required so, so to solve this problem first multiply the 2600 by 57 gives you the 148 we're explaining it and then divide the 148,200 by a thousand to get you the 148.2 total ounces Next step, to determine the amount of herbicide needed, multiply the target area by the labeled application rate. So we have 2,600 square feet, multiply it times the two ounces per thousand, gives us 5,200 ounces per thousand uh, square feet. And so you divide by the thousand, gives you 5.2 ounces of herbicide. To treat the target area, a little more than five ounces of herbicide should be added to 143 ounces. Why 143 ounces? Guys, because you have the 148 ounces, the total, and you got to subtract out 
uh, for your pesticide to figure out how much water you need. Because there are 128 ounces in one gallon, this means that there will be five ounces of herbicide added to 1.1 gallon of water because 143 divided by 128 is 1.1. So a perfect example, a typical residential site herbicide lawn treatment application guys here. So I would study this and I would kind of um, know this pretty well to be honest with you. Hint, hint, right? Um, so calibrating by volume. And calibrating by volume starts on page 129. You're going to spray to wet or paint the plant with a spray paint. Like let's say you're taking a you know paint can and you're spraying it to cover it thoroughly. It's going to get just a little drip off. You're thoroughly wetting uh, the plant. You're going to add water, no pesticide to the tank, and pressurize it. Then record the number of seconds it takes to spray a representative plant thoroughly. Now, guys, when the safety issue comes to here, you need to make sure that this equipment is 100% clean. You need to sterilize your equipment. You need to take like some ammonium and water and thoroughly clean your, uh, your sprayer before spraying any plants, any target plant. And always keep your sprayers separate. If I'm using Roundup in one sprayer, I'm never going to spray it over top of azaleas as we're going to see in this next example. I'm going to have a backpack sprayer dedicated just for my ornamental shrubs. I'm not going to mix the two, guys. You cannot do that. I don't care how much you clean it. You still could have some of that Roundup residue, which may, uh, it's probably not going to kill the plant, but it's definitely going to damage it and make it sick looking. Uh, spray water into the container for the length of time. Uh, use this number to calculate the amount of water and product needed. So we're talking about uh, spraying plants. And here we're going to apply insecticide to 18 azaleas in a plant bed. The labeled rate is three ounces of insecticide per gallon of water. The number of plants to treat is 18. The seconds to spray one average plant is 12. So it's taking 12 seconds to spray one azalea shrub thoroughly. The amount of water collected in 12 ounce or in uh, 12 seconds is 10 ounces. So it's taking 10 ounces per plant. So number one, step number one, to determine the total spray mixture needed, multiply the number of plants to treat by the amount of water collected to treat one plant. So we have 18 azaleas. It took 10 ounces for that one azalea. So we're going to come up with 180 ounces to do the 18 shrubs. Convert the ounces to gallons, 180 divided by 128 is 1.4 gallons. And then to determine the amount of insecticide needed, multiply the labeled rate by the total spray mixture. So we're doing three ounces per gallon, and we're going to multiply it times the 1.4 gives us 4.2 ounces. Add a little more of four ounces of insecticide to 176 ounces of water. Remember, we're taking that 180 total volume, subtracting uh, the amount for the pesticides to treat the 18 azaleas. Another good pesticide sample there, guys. Spot treatments and percent solutions, guys. In some situations, spot spraying, um, you don't need to calibrate your equipment. You're going to uh, apply the, uh, the chemical in your backpack sprayer and you're going to just, like you said, spot it. You've got some weeds growing up in a shrub bed. That's what you're going to do. And you might actually see things of this nature where the label will state six tablespoons per one gallon of water to be sprayed wet. And you're not going to have to calibrate. So let's look at a percent solution uh, problem. And some of this, leave a problem like this was in the landscape pesticide calculations uh, lecture that you saw me work some problems. So we're gonna convert 2% uh, to a decimal. And this is mix three gallons of a 2% pesticide solution in water. So we're gonna convert the 2% to decimal. Two divided by 100 is 0 0.02. To determine the number of ounces of pesticide needed per gallon, multiply the rate per gallon 0 0.02 by 128 ounces, and that's going to give you 2.6 ounces. To determine the amount of pesticide needed, multiply the amount of pesticide per gallon by total spray mixture, so 2.6 per gallon times 3 gallons is equivalent to 7.8 ounces, and then mix a little less than 8 ounces of pesticide with slightly less than 3 gallons of water. And that's how you're going to do your percent solution. Good math problem there. And then in that landscape pesticide calculations worksheet, you guys saw uh, some percent solutions uh, in there as well. Now, nozzle knowledge um, starts on page um, 130 in your textbook. 
know the parts of the nozzles, guys. I'm not going to go over each one of them, but uh, the main ones is your strainer. You know, it's going to collect debris and stuff that uh, you need to clean off uh, every so often. Uh, your diaphragm, your nozzle tips, you know, there's a lot of information out there on nozzles. You need to check with the manufacturers. They've got, I mean, I've seen catalogs as thick as phone books uh, talking about the different types of nozzles that are out there. Your spray pattern, you know, spray, uh, it'll depend on the type nozzle that you're using. You've got a solid cone, you've got a hollow cone, and then even a standard flat uh, cone that you can get from the nozzle types. Um, on the left here in figure 10-4, those are uh, good pictures of the parts of a uh, nozzle. And then figure 10-6, guys, we're talking about your overlapping. And then here it says to spray uniformly with a flat fan nozzle, uh, adjust so that 30 to 50% of the spray pattern overlaps. And, you know, they're on 20-inch centers, and then they're at their degrees there, and they have a 50% overlap, you know, 10% on each uh, on each side because it's only 20 inch spacing and they're overlapping um, 10 inches uh, between the nozzles. So uh, study that information. Also know um, nozzle spacing. That's the distance between the nozzle tips from center to center and then your tip orifice. Um, you know, read up on that. There's a few questions on the state exam about uh, nozzle tips. So calibrating spray guns. To calibrate a spray gun, divide a thousand square feet by your swath width to determine the distance of the test course. So you're gonna have to do that first. Spray the test course with water using the technique you will use for your application. Begin spraying just before you enter the course. So you set up that area on concrete, asphalt, or even rock. I'd rather do it on concrete or asphalt, to be honest with you guys, because you can see how your patterns are going a lot smoother on that smooth, um, slick surface. You'll see where the water goes. Record the number of seconds to spray the test course. Average it three times. Spray in a bucket the number of uh, seconds from step three. Measure and convert to gallons. And then the amount collected is equivalent to the spray gun output per thousand square feet. For acres, multiply uh, by 43.56 because there's 43,560 square feet in an acre. And Perfect math problem, again, here in the blue box, right? So, for a swath width of five feet, mark a test course that is 200 feet long. A thousand square feet divided by five gives us 200 feet. So we're gonna have a test plot 200 feet long, guys. Um, average the time in seconds to spray the 200 foot test course. Uh, so we had 77 once, 79, and then 78, and that gives us 234, so an average of 78. Gallon sprayed into the bucket in 78 seconds is 5.25. So our output is 5.25 gallons per thousand square feet, or 228 gallons per acre. Note, if your calibration output is not within 5% of the label rate, adjust your walking speed, your nozzle, or your pressure, and then recalibrate until your output comes within 5% of the label rate. And so, what would 5% of the 5.2 gallons per thousand square feet be? You just multiply 5% times your 5.25, and if it's within what the label rate states, you're good to go. And guys, your swath width, that's, you know, your spray width. So let's just basically call it that. And so we're coming up with that thousand square foot test plot at five feet spray, walking 200 feet gives us the 1,000 uh, square foot test plot. Boom sprayers. Hydraulic sprayers produce pressures up to 500 PSI. So that's a lot stronger uh, than uh, what our handheld does, right? Application rates can vary widely. Some materials are applied at a rate of one quart per thousand square feet. Others may be applied at 100 gallons or more per acre. So guys, you're getting into some big stuff here. It's, we're talking about golf course applications. We're talking about agricultural fields. We're not talking about that typical residential site. So very seldom would you use a boom sprayer unless it's a um, like a, a typical ride-on spreader sprayer. Uh, that a lot of these companies are producing. Also, you may have a little boom sprayer that you may put on front of a walker mower or any type of your stand-up uh, walk behinds. I've seen guys mount tanks with a boom sprayer on the front of the deck. Uh, but, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. 
you know, my dad would argue with you, you know, because he'll he'll put boom spray on a walker to skag, uh, pretty much anything, and he he builds his own spray tanks. Um, I'd rather I'd rather get the backpack off, and I'd rather walk the yard. I'd rather push spread it. And yes, I'm gonna have a tank sprayer on my truck for larger applications, but I just don't see having the, the mower uh, for lawn care. I'd soon get out and walk it. It's better for you. Um, and you need to be you need to be on the ground boots on ground as we said in the army uh, to be in there with with the uh, the weeds and and to really see it to see it good you need to walk it so let's walk it um the height of the nozzle above the ground determines the swath width you know uh or the effective sprayed area per nozzle so lower to the ground you know it's not going to be as wide as if it's up higher the height is usually 14 to 18 inches above the target surface. So it needs to be, you know, foot and a half or less. And here, nozzle spacing. You're gonna have some overlap spray. You want that. Uh, and then you've got your, um, your height. Top of the target, nozzle spacing. So study that chart, figure 10-8, figure 10-9. Pressure must be increased four times to uh, double sprayer output. Adjust the pressure only to make the changes in output. And that gets a little tricky, guys, when you, when you calibrate these boom sprayers. Um, so let's just go ahead and talk about calibrating them. So pre there's a pre-calibration check. You're going to have your spray pattern. Check all components, clean and the correct type. Well, you get, you know, are you using the correct nozzle? Are you using the correct... Uh, equipment to begin with. Two, clean it. Clean the screens with soapy water and a soap uh, and a soft brush. Don't use a pocket knife and don't <sighs> try to blow the debris out of the tips, the nozzle tips. I've seen my dad do both. Take a pocket knife, scrape it, and blow on it. The book says do not do that. Use soapy water with a soft brush, but you got to clean these nozzle tips. And guys, they need to be cleaned after each application. That residue can get down in there and turn, you know, hard as concrete. Clean it every single night. Your sprayers need to be cleaned every night and they need to be calibrated every morning. That just needs to become habit if you're in the lawn care uh, or turf grass industry. Rinse and spray tank uh, and partially fill with clean water. Again, you need to clean it. You're going to be going out. Um, calibrating this uh, on uh, asphalt. You don't want any chemical residue and anything in there. You need to clean it. Pressurize the sprayer and then flush your hoses and the boom. Reattach the nozzle tips and then spray water on a paved surface. That's your pre-calibration check. Remember, here's a good picture. You want 50% overlap. That's an overhead view. And look at figure 10-11. The streaks in the pattern show problems with the nozzle height alignment or the output. You don't want to see what if you were to see that on somebody's turf, um, you know, a week later? You're putting out, you're putting out a, uh, a fertilizer, a liquid fertilizer, and you're getting too much. You know, you're going to have those green stripes. You don't want that in the yard. That's going to get you fired quicker than anything. Um, here, we're still doing our pre-calibration check. Nozzle flow rate. One, with the container in ounces, catch the output from each nozzle for 20 seconds. Add the amounts and divide by the number of nozzles for the average output. If output is 10% above or below the average, replace the nozzle. Repeat step one and use the new results for the average in steps two and three. Now, here, let's look at, we got an output test one and two. And we have eight nozzles and we've got them, we've got them numbered. One through eight, the nozzles. Here's the output per nozzle. We got 16, 12, 15, 16, 16, 15, 14, and 19. The average is 15.4 because we have 123, 123 ounces total. Divide eight by eight, the number of uh, how many nozzles you have. So the acceptable range is 13.9 to 16.9. And what we're doing is we're taking that average, moving our decimal place over and adding and subtracting it to each side of it. And that tells us that nozzles two and number eight need to be replaced. Look at output test number two. We come up with an average of 15.6. It gives us 125 ounces this time, divide by the number of nozzles, eight. The acceptable range is 14 to 17.2 because we have 15.6. We've moved the decimal, subtract the 1.56 from the 15.6 and then add it to it. Gives us that range from 14 to 17.2.
Output from all nozzles is now within the acceptable range. We did test one and test two on the same sprayer because we got rid of nozzles two and eight on the first test. So a good way to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, calibration for the boom sprayers, measure your ground speed. Now, you're gonna mark a 200 foot course on a site that is typical to the surface and soil conditions of the area to be sprayed. Now, needs to be um, a place where you can see the water that you're applying. Fill the tank half full, test which gear and RPM will allow the sprayer to maintain pressure on the nozzles between a constant three to five miles an hour. Um, maybe four to six, but we'll use three to five here again. Drive the sprayer on a two foot, 200 foot course three times, start far enough away to reach speed before the first marker. So you've got your course marked out. Well, you need to get to that speed and then turn the sprayer on as soon as it hits your target spray area, the test, the test plot area. So here, we're measuring ground speed. We got the total course length of 200 feet. Test run times is 31.5, 30.3, and 29.2. We average those together, divide by three, that gives us 30.3 um, seconds. So the miles per hour is 200 feet times 60, divided by the 30.3 seconds times 88, gives us 12,000 divided by the 2664.4, and it gives us a 4.5 uh, ground speed. Our miles per hour is 4.5, and they were saying between three and five in that previous um, slide. But the miles per hour formula, guys, is distance in feet, so we had 200, uh, times 60, divided by the average time of seconds, times 88, and that 88 is constant. So collect the output. We're gonna collect for one minute or 30 seconds and multiply it by two. Second step, we're gonna divide by the number of ounces per minute or OPM by 128 to find the gallons per minute, GPM. Measure the distance in inches between the tips of the adjacent nozzles. This is the nozzle swath width. And then four, determine sprayer output by GPA by inserting the values from steps two and three and the mile per hour from your test course in the following formula. So you can see it gets a little more complicated when we're using uh, boom sprayers. So GPA is equivalent to gallons per minute times 5,940 divided by your miles per hour times W. If output is specified in gallons per thousand on the label, divide the GPA by 43,000 or 43.56. So here is our problem. We're going to mix pesticide with water to treat 2.5 acres uh, using a boom sprayer. Big, this is a big problem here, so pay attention. You already know that the labor rate, five pints per acre in a spray volume of 30 gallons per acre. Our miles per hour is 4.5. Our nozzle spacing is 20 inches and the average nozzle output is 56 ounces per minute or 0.44 gallons per minute, the 56 divided by 128. So to determine sprayer output in gallons per acre, we're gonna take our 0.44 times the 5,940 divided by 4.5 times two is equivalent to 2,613.6 divided by 90 gives us 29. This output is within 5% of the label gallons per acre of 30 plus the 1.5, so no adjustment is needed. To determine the total spray mixture, multiply the target area by the sprayer output. 2.5 acres times 29 gallons per acre gives you 72.5 gallons. To determine the amount of pesticide needed, multiply the target area by the label rate. 2.5 acres times five pints per acre is equivalent to 12.5 pints. To treat 2.5 acres, add 12.5 12 pints of pesticide to 70.9 gallons of water, which would be 72.5 minus the 12.5 pints. So that is a, that is a big uh, pesticide application problem that you would need to solve. Now, that's why I kind of, I like making it a little easier on myself and I like making it easier on my technicians. Guys, walking it with a backpack or a gun sprayer you're not gonna to have to do quite as much math as you would on using uh, a boom sprayer with all the nozzle types. And so think about that, calibrating that each and every morning, that's gonna take you a little bit of time. 
Uh, making adjustments. If your sprayer's output is not within 5% of the gallons per acre on the label recommendation, then adjust the pressure, speed, or nozzles according to the guidelines in Table-2. And there is Table-2. Adjusting the boom sprayer for gallons per acre. If measured output is within 5 to 10% of the label GPA, then increase the pressure to deliver more spray or decrease the pressure to deliver less spray. If measured output varies from label uh, GPA by 10 to 25%, then adjust travel speed. Slower speed delivers more spray. Faster speeds deliver less spray. Measure the speed under field conditions and use a new speed in figuring the GPA. If measured output varies from label uh, gallons per acre by more than 25%, then change nozzles and repeat the pre-calibration check and calibration process. And you don't want to be spraying if it's 25% over anyway, guys. You're, 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 you're losing money big time. And so granular spreaders, you know, we're going to put out lime. We're going to put out uh, our pre-emergent uh, fertilizer in the spring. We're going to be pushing it out. Now, some guys will use a truck-mounted sprayer, gun sprayer, and, and mix their uh, pre-emergent with their fertilizer. But I like doing it. I like, I like pushing it. I do like pushing it. I don't like the liquid fertilizer. I, if, if I can walk it with a spreader, I'm going to do it. Um, so for calibration with these, you know, establish the swath width, determine the application rate, and then are we using a drop or rotary spreader? Now, I don't like drop spreaders. Um, you know, the only good thing about them is that, you know, there's low drift. You know, you're not going to have much drift with it. The product falls directly below it. Um, it is a little easier probably to calibrate than the rotary spreader uh, because you can put a pan on the bottom of it and collect it. Um, but I'm just, I just like the rotary spreader and I'm sure most of you guys are all uh, very familiar with a um, rotary spreader. So let's calibrate a drop spreader. You know, there's method one, you know, there's three methods in here, I believe. Um, but you can use the catch pan. Measure the straight course, 100 square feet. Fill the hopper half full and select the gate setting based on the label. Now, you buy a, a fertilizer, it's going to tell you, based on the manufacturer of the fertilized spreader, uh, what the gate opening should be. That's why I like buying Lesco uh, fertilizer and having a Lesco push fertilizer spreader. You know, it's, it, the information is there on the bag, guys. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, push spreader over the test course and weigh the material in the pan. Determine application and rate in pounds per thousand square feet and then multiply the weight by 10. Compare spreader application rate to the label rate. Uh, method two, you could sweep it and weigh it. You know, you're gonna sweep up the product that you put out if you don't have the catch pan, sweep it up and then weigh it. And then you could weigh before and after. You'll weigh the product before you put it in the hopper and then measure what's left. And so, um, I still like the sweep and weigh method because that's what I'm used to doing with our rotary spreaders. It's just the way you're going to do it. So let's look at the catch pan method. You've got two pounds per uh, uh, product per thousand square feet. That's the label rate. The spreader watt, you know, it's three feet. So the, the, the product is dropping three feet down below. It doesn't spread out. It drops below uh, the machine, the push spreader. It is hence a drop spreader. So it's dropping directly below it. The test course length is 33 feet. Amount collected in the catch pan is 120 grams or 0.26 pounds. 120 grams divided by 454 grams per pound. So the spreader rate per thousand is 0.26 or 2.6 pounds. Adjust the spreader by reducing the gate open until the rates fall between 1.8 and 2.2 pounds because we want to be within 10%. That two pounds plus or minus 10% is 1.8 and 2.2. Um, calibrate a drop spreader with a way before and after method. Put two pounds of granulars uh, in a drop spreader that has a swath width of two feet. So here we have a different width, guys. After applying the product to a 50-foot test course, you recover 1.75 pounds of granulars from the spreader. The calibrated rate is 0.25 pounds per thousand square feet or 2.5 pounds per thousand square feet. Um, when you're using a drop spreader, guys, you're going to have to walk from this end to this end 
and stop the spreader. Then turn it around and then start dropping the product again. And you wanna do these header strips for your ends. So if you got them on each end, you can actually go to it, stop the, the machine, stop the, the spreader from dropping the product, turn it around and then open it and start walking again. And when you turn around, you're dropping more product there in areas that you don't need it. Calibrate a rotary spreader. All right, first step, one box in the middle and then space remaining on two foot centers. And uh, I think they were saying that we need to have, trying to see how many boxes we should use. Oh, seven or nine, we do need an odd number. Um, so that way you've got one in the middle and then you've got even number on either side. Make three passes over the box in the same direction with product following uh, the setting recommendation. Record the weight or pour uh, into jars marked with the box number. The center jar should have most product in it with the mounts tapering off evenly. So that middle jar is gonna have more and as it goes down like this, you're gonna see it decrease evenly, it should be evenly. Find jars on both sides that have half the product of the middle jar in distance and that is your swath width. And so here you can see the gentleman uh, with the boxes out there, he's applying the uh, product out. Um, and then B, 14B here, we've collected material from the space boxes and checked the distribution pattern and found the swath width of the rotary spreader. And so, um, you know, you've got the one here that was in the middle. And then as you can see, it, it starts tapering down. You want to find the one that looks like it's got half uh, full of the product in the middle. And then the distance in between there is your swath width. And here's a little bit better picture of it. You've got the, you've got the push spreader coming towards you. Uh, the jar in the middle is number five, so there's four on either side. And you can see that it's filled there. And then number two and number eight is half full of what jar number five is. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six jars. They're spaced two foot apart. So we have a 12 foot swath width for that push spreader. And so measuring the application rate, we got step one, weigh out enough product to load the spreader for a calibration test over a distance that can be easily converted to a thousand square feet. Again, guys, how many times I gotta tell you, break down your properties to thousand square foot blocks. Step two, select a testing setting to deliver one half the labeled rate Note, the spreader settings are not linear, so using a number half the number recommended on the product label will not result in half the application rate. You may need to experiment with the equipment. Get familiar with it, know it. Step three, apply the material over the measured distance and weigh the product remaining in the spreader. The difference in pounds should be within 10% of one half the pesticide label rate. Adjust the size of the gate opening until your application rate is in the right range. Now, look at table 10.3. There is a test question in this class based on the swath width. Your distance and effective swath width for rotary spreaders to equal 1,000 square feet. And I believe it is if your effective swath width is 12 feet, your test course length needs to be 84 feet. That is a test question. I know that. So study this. Know this chart. Know where it's at in the book, guys, when you're taking this test. Except the state exam. My exams in this course, you know, you open book, you're taking it online. But when you go to sit for your, your, your pesticide applicator exam with the state offered by the Department of Agriculture, you're not going to be able to use your books. So let's calibrate a rotary spreader to apply a turf herbicide using two passes over the treatment site. Label rate says 80 pounds per acre. We have effective swath width of 12 feet. So the length of the calibration course is going to be 84 feet. Beginning weight of the product is 908 grams or two pounds. End weight of the product is 426 grams. The difference is equivalent to 482 grams or 1.06 pounds. So we divide our, where well, we take our uh, 482 grams, divide it by 454, it gives us one pound. The spreader is calibrated to apply 1.06 pounds of product per thousand square feet. Rate per acre. The rate per 1,000 square feet times the 43.56 or 1.06 times 4.356 is equivalent to 46.2 pounds per acre. The rate is higher than the rate needed of 40 pounds per acre, one half of 80 pounds per acre. Adjust the spreader by reducing the gate open until the rate falls between 
10% of the 40 pounds between 36 and 44 pounds. So we figured out that 10%, we've got our 40 pounds. So 10% of 40 is four. So we can go to 36 to 44 pounds of product and we are good to go. The determined amount of granular insecticide I needed to treat 2.5 acres. Label rate is three pounds per thousand square feet. Convert acres to square feet. So 2.5 acres times the 43,560 square feet per acre is 108,900 square feet. To get the total number of product needed, multiply the area times the application rate. So we have 108,900 square feet times three pounds per thousand. We can cancel out our square feet. It's gonna give us 326,700 pounds divided by a thousand. We're gonna need 326 0.7 pounds. And if we're getting 50 pound bags, we're going to need, you know, seven and we're going to need seven bags to do the uh, 2.5 acres. And we're not going to use all of that seventh bag. Use about half of it. Now, when spreading your product, uh, in figure 10-6, this is called the right angle method. That means you're going to double pass. Uh, you're going to go one direction, turn around, go down, back, and then you're going to crisscross it in a perpendicular pattern to get the even coverage. You're going to make two passes that are 90 degrees angle from each other. Or to use the half width method, apply in parallel passes one half the effective swath width apart. So we had a 12 foot swath width. Uh, we're going down to six foot if we're doing uh, the way they're doing it here in 10-7. And guys, that concludes chapter 10 in your ornamental and turfed textbook. I appreciate it, guys, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.